I'm in quarantine with uh, Fonzie and Zach from Fonzie and Company. How are you guys? Yeah, yeah. pretty good. Pretty yeah. good indeed. Fun yeah. times, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like so the most you're in Bristol in a cafe restaurant that you both manage. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, is there a jukebox in this cafe restaurant? Uh, Patent pending. I know, but... Uh, <laughs> We kind of are the jukebox at the moment. Mm. We're pretty um, territorial when it comes to playing music in this place, and it's either his or mine, normally his. This is how we get <laughs> so many uh, followers on this. Spotify will just play it in the restaurant and go, oh, this band's right. It's us. <laughs> yeah, well, the reason I ask this is obviously you're called Fonzie, although I should add it's not your actual real name. And people must will remember Fonzie the Fonz from Happy Days. Mm -hmm. So tell us why you got the nickname Fonzie. Henry Winkler was a massive fan, uh, well my mum was a massive fan of Happy Days growing up. I used to wear big leather jackets, I'll have my hair slicked back, have the uh, glasses on and there was already an Adam uh, in my neighbourhood so two Adams would have been too confusing so uh, Fonzie. Two Adams in the same neighbourhood? Yeah you wouldn't, <laughs> think, yeah, you'd think it would be easy but no. Uh, <laughs> I didn't so, think Bristol was such a small place. No, it was in London. This, uh, yeah, oh, right. no, we're actually none of us are from Bristol, um, so. Yeah, I know. I'm going to come on to that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, it just kind of stuck with me. And Fonzie's, you know, the Fonz, Henry Winkler's, just the coolness of the cool. You know, the sitcoms have been good, but I mean, you're never going to get better than Happy Days. Just. Uh, and it stuck with me, and I think that kind of idolization of you know when music rock rock ruled the world, wasn't a huge amount of pop in the charts, and everyone was just free. I mean, not happy, but not, I mean, <laughs> exactly. was, yeah, happy is a very definitive yeah. definition. Uh, but yeah, music was a bit more free, I mean, mm. feel, which uh, is a big uh, inspiration and lead up to how uh, Fonzie and Co kind of gave birth. For sure. Um, yeah. Fonzie and Co gave birth, yes, or, or gave birth to Fonzie and Co even. So, yeah. <laughs> so the reason I was asking about the jukebox is obviously, you know, to do with Fonzie. So I want to know, are you able to get a jukebox to play just by bashing it? Uh, no, that is, uh, no, I'm not yet. No, not yet. <laughs> if, I okay. don't, if I do it on someone else, then... <laughs> when, you, when you walk into your cafe and you click your fingers, what happens? <sighs> Normally it's like... Hello, do you don't want a table? Fucking <laughs> <laughs> service, please. Oh, service, <laughs> mum, mum. There's supposed to be at least two girls there, so <laughs> need to work on that a bit. Right, so for people that aren't familiar with your band, we'll start from the beginning. Fonzie and Company is a genre-breaking five-piece Americana stroke alt rock band from Bristol, right? We've established you're not actually from Bristol, so why don't you tell us where your bandmates are from and how you all met? Well, uh, well, you're from a few different places, really. I, um, yeah. <laughs> I grew up in grew up in London. My parents moved to Salisbury. I then moved back to London and uh, met this guy when I was about seventeen. We were about seventeen. Seventeen, eighteen. 18, 18 yeah. Yeah. Uh, I went on a blind date, um, and the lady that I went on the date took him along. And I, uh, I thought that was going somewhere completely different for a second. <laughs> no, no, no. I was not the blind date. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm a friend of the blind. I was going to say it must have turned out perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the best blind date ever. Uh, we had uh, yeah had a few projects that uh, didn't pan out. Eventually uh, moved to Bristol. Uh, we met Sam. Uh, Sam I used to work with in a restaurant called Three Brothers Burgers. I knew he was a good drummer, but we could never actually get a hold of him because he was always in a band yeah. and he was always busy. So. Uh, after prodding and prodding and prodding, eventually, he, well, I like to think he just came on his own accord, but he eventually... Oh, yeah, uh, prodding, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <it> took <laughs> uh, yeah uh, Olivia, uh, our other vo uh, lead vocalist, um, she is actually Sam's partner of four or five oh, years. Okay. So she came on board uh, or, um, with Sam, uh, actually Liv came first, I think. Liv came first, because uh, Sam was still in a couple of other projects at the time, and then very kindly after a bit of this, uh, decided to uh, join up. Well, she with. couldn't take any more of the prodding. She said, I give in. The prodding was good. Um, uh, and so uh, yeah, then Jed was a Facebook uh, advert. 
Yeah, we put up a Facebook advert for a bassist and we um, recycled a couple until we found one that we really like. Yeah. Um, and Jed just really slap bang, just fit the puzzle piece. Mm -hmm. Almost fits me perfectly. He's so fantastically, almost disgustingly energetic on stage. Yeah, and it's so like, how are you so happy? <laughs> And it's not just uh, inside the band, like outside in life, he's just always so happy and like just loves life. And it's like, you just. Why do you hate people like that? <laughs> right? And then um, I'm from Bournemouth originally, but I've lived in about Bristol the same amount of time as this one has and uh, never left really. So I'd say Bristol is pretty much where we call home. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's a nice place, Bristol. I've been there a couple of times. Where were you from in, in London, Adam? London's a big uh, place. Oh, my mum was in uh, Hound around the Chiswick roundabout, so Hounslow, Staines around there, Dabs in Islington. So it's cooler to say you're from Islington than it is from we'll Hounslow. So we'll say we'll say <laughs> Islington, but we'll keep that on the hush. We'll stick with that. <laughs> so um, another little um, snippet I've got from your um, bio is: whilst the band portray an indie alt Americana vibe, mm -hmm. the band remain open uh, remains open to ideas and different aspects of rock. So mm -hmm. tell us sort of about, about your sound and how you incorporate all these different aspects into it. I think it's because there are just so many different genres that we are open to and enjoy listening to. Like, uh, not just within Fonzie and Co, but just general listening. I mean, before this project, we were in an 80s influence synthwave rock duo. Um, <laughs> just to see, to show how diverse our listening really is. Um, but yeah. In terms of influences for this project, so uh, you've got Tom Petty, there's um, Fleetwood Mac being a big one, Just uh, not just because of the guitar and instrumentation, but just the vocalisation that Fleetwood Mac have as well, um, with the different harmonies. Um, there's Pixies as well, uh, again, not just through the way they sound, but their writing style as well. That's a really big one. Who else is that? There is... Uh... Uh, so yeah, Rush, the Cranberries, uh, a big one going forward. I mean, Sam, uh, our drummer, just comes in and blast beats throughout the entire thing. <laughs> so I really don't know what's going on there. Might incorporate some Lamb of God style blast beats. Oh, at some for sure, point. absolutely. So yeah. that's the thing. Like we all have our own uh, loves of different genres of rock, and we just basically try and fortify in this project where we can fit that in, and then yeah. on doing co all in all just creates the sound which is inspired for all these different pieces of that. Again, like pieces of a puzzle and obviously um, as talented, as uh, amazing as uh, drummer as Sam is, where he's like <laughs> With this project, of it, sadly, um, I feel bad because he doesn't always get that freedom to get as mental yeah. as he could in some of his other projects, but hopefully I'd like to think he has really good fun with this one. <laughs> Now you've only been together as a band since since last year, yeah. Um, and already, say, was it six months within within six months of your career, you'd already uh, got a record contract. So yeah. Which is great. So yeah. tell us how that all came about. It was a lot of uh, prodding and pushing. I mean, I'm. I'm a lot of prodding. I, yeah. You need, to, you need to change your name to prom, to Fonzie and the Prodders. Let's talk a bit about your WEP, Last Birth. So you self-released this in September last year. So again, very soon into the you know band being a band. Mm -hmm. So tell us about a bit about the songs on it. Why why did you call it Last Birth? Last Birth was um, uh, this was kind of my I was having a midlife crisis. I'm only 29. Midlife. About midlife. You're too young. Yeah. <laughs> I know, tell me about it. That was yeah, midlife. Like, yeah. Uh, I've been in so many bands at this point. I mean, I enjoyed every moment of it. But this was kind of like, right, I need to do this that, uh, because obviously our old band broke up and we were just like, right, I've been doing this for too long. Um, this is this has to be the project where I just write every. I, I don't try and be anyone else. I don't try and you know recreate anyone else's sounds. Let's yeah. just put all of those. As Zach was saying earlier, let's put all those sounds. Let's put them down on wax and let's really have a go at doing something that comes from the heart. Something that's you know general. Everyone can enjoy. And last birth was just like let's have one more go mm -hmm. at trying to make this work. It makes perfect sense now. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's very much so symbolic. Right. So, so many. Oh, sorry. I was just saying. <laughs> I was going to talk about your your new EP. 
<laughs> no, 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 of course. I was just uh, adding on, yeah, it is, like Adam said, it's very, oh, sorry, Fonzie. Thank you. Uh, it's symbolic. <laughs> so, yeah, tried so many different attempts to, you know, try and get heard that this is our last attempt, it's like our last real go at, let's just give this one more go, and if it doesn't work out, we'll call quits and we'll be restaurant managers for the rest of our life. Um, we'll be in a tribute <laughs> band or something. Yeah, yeah, we'll be in a tribute <laughs> band and go from there. Um, so the fact that uh, the EP got some really good recognition from that was really like heartening, and um, and uh, EP two is coming along now. So. Yeah. It is, and it's not called EP two. It's called Is It Me. It's due out on the twentieth of November. So why don't you tell us what it's about? What were the songs written about? Yeah, is it me? Um, uh, so this one was kind of a uh, based on social media, um, sort yeah. of the influence that social media has on our lives right now. Whether that, whether you've been um, right wing, left wing, you know, it just it can be the best thing in the world, or it can be, you know, the the worst spread of misinformation. It can, you know, influence um, voting. It can give people wrong information about anything. And you know, we we were so privileged back in the, you know, when you had the AOL dial up. In the 90s and uh, you know it would take you about what 20 minutes to download a picture yeah you know i think we just kind of, we just kind of been yeah, i didn't even have a computer though <laughs> <laughs> we just kind of been spoiled with this i think it's kind of it, it's been abused so it's kind of like a kind of an interpretation on like you know what we used to have and what we still could have now but i think we've just kind of spoilt it a little bit um, uh, we've, yeah. we've taken this great gift and this great tool. I mean, the internet was donated for God's sake, it's, uh, and it's, uh, it, it's just like getting given something in life and spoiling it. You know, as human beings, you know, whether that be the earth, whether that be social media, anything. You know, it's just yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, that really <laughs> is. No, no, absolutely. But that really <laughs> is the truth, though. Like you know, nowadays, like can't remember the first social media platform I had. I think it was like MySpace or Bebo or something like that. But back in those days, it was very primitive. And nowadays, with things like Facebook and Instagram and stuff, we kind of use that social media to rely on information and just assume that that's the information and that it's the first point of truth. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end of the day, social media is other people's opinions. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's never... It might be the truth, it might not be, but I always find that people just make that assumption that it is. So it's a really distorted truth in a way, and I think that affects on the name. So is it me? It's like, is it me? Or is, is, it, that, is, it, is it me? <laughs> uh, something really gone, you know, tits up. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah that, that's where it came from. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Let's talk about one of your songs, and in fact, one of your videos that I would recommend everybody check out. It's called Queen of Nothing. It was received an award by the London Music Video Awards for the best animated music video. So tell us when that was and how the video came together. Well, uh, I am the uh, not just the nice looking keyboardist and saxophonist, nice looking <laughs> far, isn't it? Uh, but I am um, I'm a designer as well by trade. So. Ah, so so you did, you created it, did you? It's yeah. Your baby. It's my little baby that I uh, willingly shared with others. Um, but yeah, so, uh, but the idea, um, although I created it, the idea that prospered was from everyone's input coming into it. Um, so I just kind of made it happen, I suppose. But we wanted something a bit animated. Like um, we were looking at doing a music video beforehand, but it just didn't pan out. So we just did like a very quick homemade thing. So we just wanted something to be a bit more of an eye popper, I suppose. Um, we so have we looked, looked like, back. yeah, we have looked at like the concept of being in a video game. It's like, has a mm -hmm. band ever been in a video game before? Obviously, you got Red Hot Chili Peppers, Californication. Mm -hmm. I think we saw Patton Pending, but I mean, that was more of a lyric video with Mario footage on it, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. But realistically, we never we like unique concepts for videos mm -hmm. if we can help it. Uh, and we we couldn't actually find anything like apart from no. that. I think it was that Patton Pending video that actually kind of gave us inspiration, like. Um, playing as a kid back in the days of the Game Boy, I love playing Mario and stuff, and I love playing I was going to say, it's like Mario Brothers, so for people who haven't seen it, the idea is that you're you're going to rescue all the, the back members of the band, and you've got Fat Cat's castle that you're trying to destroy, and it's like Mario kind of jumping up and going through different levels and stuff, brilliant! It took a long time to build, um, but um, it was like, the out score at the end of it was absolutely brilliant um yeah. I, was, I, I think 
say for everyone, we were so, so happy with the results. Um, yeah. We appeared in the game almost to the point where you'd almost want to be able to play the game and be like, oh, yeah. I level that. Yeah, well, I'm watching it. This, yeah. might, this might happen. We'll see what the demand Possibly, is. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, that's it. You know, if you start playing arenas and stuff, I think there might be some demand for this game to be made. Oh. <laughs> 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 Lastly, I want to move on to something um, that's just about you, Adam. And I noticed um, recently you put out a video regarding your decision to stop drinking. Mm -hmm. so why don't you tell us a little bit about that? So I'm, you know, obviously it's going to be very personal to you, whatever your reasons are. But if you're willing to share anything, yeah, no, just a heads up. If you, this is non-alcoholic beer. I know I <laughs> answer that question. So you've been drinking throughout this entire interview. What are you on about? It's not real. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't think it was beer actually. <laughs> uh, no, I've um, I've got a. Um, uh, diagnosis from the doctor about five years back. This is when I was on tour with an older band. Um, I, I came back to uh, Bristol for the uh, Bristol leg of the tour. Um, I went to see my, my doctor about some results and I basically have a fibrosis of the liver. So, it, and it's not, and it's quite at a stage where it's like, you shouldn't be at this point. You, you, I think it was what, so five years ago, it would have been 24, 25. Um, so your liver should not be like this, basically, if you continue down this, so you will eventually go into acute liver failure and that's it you they can be reversed um obviously the you know the usual healthy diet and don't drink as much you know things like that um and that was kind of my decision i mean that was five years ago i only just decided to do this now <laughs> this has to stop i've always like needed that crutch on stage on touring i've had problems mm -hmm. with um uh, substance uh, abuse as well, alcohol, and I've just been like, what's the point anymore? It's it. You grow up on uh, Slash, uh, Motley Crue, Aerosmith, and you watch that. Those are the coolest dudes ever. I want to be like that. And from that young impressionable age, you just get it in your head. Like, yeah, man, you have to be smashed in order to make a great performance. But I'm yet to actually try that. I mean, <laughs> I'm yet to see myself not a little bit drunk on stage at least. So that will be the big hurdle. But yeah. I'm, happy, I'm happy I've done this. Um, three months. How long has it been now? Uh, three months now. Three months. Yeah, we'll see how long. It, I mean, obviously the moment the doctor gives me the all clear, like I'm not going to smash it, but you know, I am missing a drink. Um, I think we all enjoy, especially through lockdown. That was hell. Yeah, you take a really hard time to do it. Yeah. But I tell you what, I'm so glad he did. And uh, like, um, obviously, I've known Adam for a really Fonzie, sorry, Fonzie. Censor out the A words whenever I say. Yeah, I think I called him the A. Yeah. Yeah. Something wrong with names beginning with A, okay? <laughs> Alex, how's that? Yeah. Um, but no, I'm so so proud of him. Like, um, I've been around this guy through different music projects, different scenarios. And if we're not working together on a music project uh, project together, then you know we're out normally in the town or just socialising together. So it's been a real big devoted effort of you to stop this. And I'm really, really, really proud of him uh, oh, for being nice. able to keep it up. <laughs> and uh, if he drinks, I will basically, I will kill him. Um, because obviously I care about it. So nice. <laughs> do it, I will. Then I'm going to do it for you. God damn it, right. Yeah, so no, I am really proud of him. Like this is, uh, it's challenging. Well, I need to give him a hug. I just, you know, I mean, Oh, I, I would be giving him a hug if it wasn't um, the distance and the social distancing. Uh, yeah. Yes, I, I would be giving him a hug right now. Oh. Might be to that. Well, <laughs> well, if we ever do meet, mm -hmm. if this lockdown ever ends and you're on tour and I come and see you, I will give you a hug then. I wish oh. you all the best with your career, both of you, with the band, your personal journey and hope only good things happen to you. You know, best of luck for, for whatever's coming your way. Thank you so much, Thank Anne. Absolute much. pleasure speaking to you. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Take care, guys. Take care. Yeah. Bye.